Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. Hello everyone, we are so glad you tuned in this Wednesday night. We're gonna have an amazing word from God that really, I really believe that we go from, you know, from glory to glory. What that means is that it's a process of growth, that every sermon that we hear is a building block to our future. And God always gives us a word for a season that we're in to prepare us for our future. So I'm glad you're here. This word we're going to be talking about today is really going to be focused on, focusing on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know, Jesus died and rose again from the dead, not just to forgive us of our sins, but this was the main reason he did that, to restore a relationship with us. And it's a shame that sometimes we want his blessings and we're so interested in God, give me this, give me that. And we serve a God of blessing. But I think we've kind of really just uh, abandoned or neglected our relationship with Jesus. You know, when we go to heaven, the greatest thing in heaven is not going to be the streets of gold or, or how beautiful it's going to be. The greatest thing in heaven is Jesus Christ, our relationship with him. And right now, you know, you're struggling in your walk. You're saying, man, I just, I'm struggling my walk. It's, it just comes down to one thing, loving Jesus. When you love Jesus more than anything in the world, you'll never struggle with your walk again. So we're going to talk about making sure we're developing and maintaining that relationship with the Lord. But um, we have Gavin Tate all the way from Georgia, Atlanta area. Yes, sir. Yeah, so he's here, ready Hello. to give us a word in just a second. Um, Friday night, I know we're, we're going to meet here Friday night as well. Yes, what, sir. What, what should we expect on Friday night? Friday night is going to be uh, a night of deliverance. And uh, all satanic bondage, you know, Jesus wants people free. Yes. And God is love. The Bible says that God is love. And a lot of times, you know, we read 1 Corinthians 13, we read all the factions of love, it's patient, it's kind, it's all these beautiful things that we all want in our lives. Yeah. Because the most powerful thing, more than any battle or any war or any weapon, is love. Right. It can break down the craziest of walls and yes. can lead the people you never thought would ever want anything to do with you. Love can break down any barrier. And it is what the world needs. It's what we as Christians need. You never stop needing love. And God is that direct source, but we have to have an example that we can follow. And the Bible says that Jesus is the full depiction of the Father. He is the mirror image of the Father. So when we look at Jesus, which we're going to do on Friday night, we're going to go through what love looks like. And I call it when love came walking. Right. And it's when Jesus literally through his life, I'm going to take you through. And we're going to have a fest where we see what love does in every situation. And the main one that love does is it does not let you stay bound. Right. So by the end of the service, we are going to have a time where the Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to set people free of wow. demonic spirits, of bondages, of addictions right outside. It's going to be a powerful time. Yeah, I, I really believe that's exactly what's going to happen. And it's, it's our responsibility first to show up yeah. because if we show up, that's that's half the miracle. I always say half the battle is just showing up to the right rooms in life. And if you show up, you're, you're a candidate for a breakthrough, a miracle. But also, this is a great opportunity to invite our friends and relatives that you know are in bondage. There's people that are in bondage of sickness. That sickness has become a cycle for them. Fear, depression, it could be an addiction. It could be a cycle that they're in. It doesn't matter what the bondage is. We serve a God Jesus, yes. that sets us free. And the yes. scripture says, yes. who the son sets free is free indeed. Free what that means free is indeed. there's other stuff that kind of looks like freedom, but it's not real freedom. Only right. Jesus can really set us free. Free to what? Free to live the life that God has for you. Also, before we, uh, we're going to pray, but before we actually pray, I just want to do an announcement. Friday night's going to be awesome, but also tomorrow here at our campus, Hallmark Campus, we're going to have, oh, we're going to have um, Amazon's going to be here. McLean's right next door is going to be here. Ready, 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 ready Mix is going to be here. Robert's Ready Mix is going to be here. Other companies are going to be here. And this is their goal. They want to hire 2,000 people. So what that means, it's not coming in to fill out an app, coming in 
to get hired. And so there, tomorrow, we're serving our community and we're making sure everybody know. let everybody know if you need a job, you need a career, you want to get a new start in life, tomorrow here, they're going to be 2,000, we're hire, they're hiring 2,000 people tomorrow. So if you need a job, you're going to come here to the World Outreach, maybe friends, relatives, let them know. Be here tomorrow. So be, be, if you want more information, you can just check us on our website. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we're, we're going to get into your word and we're going to talk about just your, our relationship with you, Jesus. And I pray at the end, when we're done, we'll realize, man, we need Jesus. I need more of God in my life. And Father, that we'll draw closer to you and you promise you'll draw close to us. Speak to us today. Yes, Transform yes, our lives. Yes, Father, visit every single home right now with your power. Father, God, live in every home. Set people free right now. Heal people that are sick right now. Bring us together, unified in your spirit. And we even pray, Father, for our world right now. There's so much pain and hurt, suffering and division. We ask you, Lord, Father, that your church will be united and be a light for this world. We just thank you, Lord, that everything we get done will be done through prayer and, and Father, listening to your word and taking action. So we just thank you for speaking to us today. We're ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. So I know you came with a word, and I want you to just, what has God been putting on your heart, Gavin? Amen. Um, today and in these times that we're in, obviously every time, it is important to be close to Jesus. And I think we sometimes forget as Christians um, the reason why you got saved. It wasn't necessarily for a group of people, which community is powerful. Um, maybe the reason you came to church in the first time was to meet a girl or to meet a guy. Or, I mean, who knows the reasons why we showed up in the building in the first place. Maybe you just needed love and, it, and, and you were just so desperate in your life because of whatever situation you were in. You, maybe you were coming in as your last call, an emergency, saying, God, if you don't do something. However you showed up to church, the most powerful reason why you got saved and the reason will always be the pearl of great price and his name is Jesus. In church, we forget sometimes and we start getting distracted about other things and other things going on in the world. We try to become bigger mega churches. We try to have all these other priorities in life, but Jesus keeps it really simple. And he says, if you love me, my father will come and love you and we will manifest ourselves to you. And what I see happen in pastor so often is we have Christians who supposedly pray, yet there's no transformation or change. Mm. But the Bible says very clearly in the book of Philippians and Colossians, all through the epistles, that if you truly have been with Jesus intimately, it will show in your life. And the, the real evidence we have, in other words, of God's presence is change. If nothing about you is different than it was last year, Maybe you feel like you're praying and saying words, but you haven't intimately met with Jesus. If you still are addicted to the same thing you were before, then hey, thank God you're still in church. Thank God you're still coming. So you're doing the right things, but you're missing out on the pearl of great price. He is the agent of change. Meeting him face to face intimately is the thing that will change you. And not only will it change you, it will keep you changed. How many people do you know who have had a breakthrough but fell back into it? How many people around you have gotten off an addiction but they're addicted again today? How many people in our lives have gone through depression three years later, they're back in it again? How many people have made decisions good in their life, but all of a sudden they come around again to the same bad decisions? It's almost like they never learned their lesson. It's like they keep taking circles around the same mountain. See, that's what happens if we lose intimate connection with Jesus. What I am saying is that sermons are necessary. What I am saying is that coming together, praise God, the more that we can, it's gonna be necessary. Community is necessary. But nothing will ever replace the face-to-face, -face, by yourself, intimate communion with a living God right. who knows you better than you know yourself. 
And that's what we want to talk about tonight. You know, so, I mean, great major point that he just said today is that the proof that you've had intimate relationship with Jesus is change. Change. You know, if we're not seeing change in our lives, right. is that we're not really in communion with God. It's kind of like this. We know about God. Amen. And we might even know God right. through others. Right. But God is saying, I don't want you to know God through others. I want you to know God. I want you to know me personally. And Jesus died so we could have a personal relationship with him. And we want to get to the point that every one of you that are listening, not know about Jesus, because there was a big crowd that used to surround Jesus. Yeah. Crowds following Jesus. Thousands. They were interested in him. They maybe were fans. They knew about him. They could tell you his favorite stories. They you quote scripture. Right. But there weren't many of them that actually had a relationship with him yes. and loved Jesus. Yes. And, and this is what God is saying today. He wants us to fall in love with him. Yeah. And, and that's gonna, we're gonna learn how to do that today. So this is good because after we have intimate relationship with Jesus, what happens? change don't we want some change in our lives amen amen and you know we don't want to uh be the status quo which this is honestly what's expected of christianity today and this might sound very sad but the majority of the unsaved the majority of people who do not know jesus they are not attracted enough to jesus because our lives are not showing anything that is more attractive than what they can already have and this is what we've become as a church. People with the titles of Christianity, but the lifestyles like we're still lost. And people, if you look into the face of Jesus, if you meet with a holy God and his presence overtakes you, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've had that moment. God wants us to have moments, not moment. He wants it to be an ongoing encounter. He wants it to be an ongoing face-to-face -face interaction. When that happens, your addiction cannot stay on you. When that happens, your sin cannot hold on you. When that happens, the things you hate about yourself will dissolve away. Your insecurities will leave. Why? Not because you are anything, you don't memorize the Bible, you didn't have any of that. You know what you did? You showed up to God's presence faithfully and he was able to change you this is what the bible says philippians 2 13 says it like this that even though you try so hard philippians 2 13 god is constantly working in you watch this giving you the desires and the power to do what pleases him listen a lot of us have desires to please god but we don't got the power to follow through right. but see god is working in us even behind the scenes, even when you fail, he's still working on you. Even when you're going to church, even when you feel like everything's going down, if you're showing up in God's presence, the interaction's still going on. The surgery's still taking place. You're still opened up. You're saying, God, take it out of me, put it in me. And he won't just give you the desire. By the end of tonight, I believe he's gonna impart the power, even through these screens, to follow through with the desire to please him in Jesus name. Yes. So we're gonna get into the word just real quick. I'm gonna walk you through some scriptures. Please get your Bible. If you don't already have it, see the Bible's a powerful thing. You should bring that to church. Uh, I have my notes here or I would actually have my Bible but I wrote all the notes out. So just know I do have a Bible as well. Um, but Ephesians 2.13 says it like this. I love the Passion Translation. It says, yet look at you now. This is Paul writing. Everything is brand new. When you got saved, what happened? You became a new creature. We all know that, right? Old things have passed away. Although you were once distant and far from God, you have now been brought delightfully close through the blood of Jesus. Y'all, we don't have any reason to be far from God anymore. Right. Well, Gavin, you don't know my past. Listen, that's not a big enough excuse that the blood can't take care of. Well, Gavin, you don't know what I'm going through right now. I, I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you what, it's not more powerful than the blood that can take care of it. Well, Gavin, I, you don't know my story. Listen, whatever your story is, the blood has already purchased the right for you not to be distant any longer, but to come delightfully close to Jesus. You know, when, when you think about, you mentioned in the blood, it's Jesus' life. And, and, and that really yes. shows us how bad a relationship God wants with us. 
Well, how bad do you want a relationship with us? I'll shed my blood for you. Jesus. I want to have a relationship with you. I'll give my life. I'll give everything. I'll give up heaven to come to earth to meet with you. This is what God wants. This is through that relationship is where we're going to find the fullness of life that we're all looking for. That scripture said that we were separated. There's another scripture that says we were dead in our trespasses. Yeah. That our life was actually, compared to where we are with Christ, yep. was a life of, it was death. And what it means we were separated from God. We were separate from everything Amen. we desire in life. That's Amen. awesome. So we have a disease that's onset us now, Pastor. Okay. A disease is coming to the church. We all know about COVID that's been spreading, but I, I'm talking about a disease that spread faster and more than COVID-19. Mm. And it's the disease of prayerlessness. Wow. It is a church that has lost the bruises on their knees. It is a church that has lost the knees of the saints have stopped hitting the floor and we're now trying to now run our churches, run our ideas, run our families in our own strength. Wow. And prayerlessness is a disease. The Bible actually says it's a sin. And when we lose connection with Jesus mm. through prayer, which is our number one way of connecting with God on a regular basis, then we start to suffer. Because listen, you are like a vehicle. Vehicles run on gas. If the gas runs out, doesn't matter how beautiful the vehicle is, it is not worth anything any longer because it can't function. You've lost the essence of what makes you function. You were wow. created to run on God. Wow. When you lose proximity with God, listen, proximity, literally closeness with God, your actual distance between you and God, the farther away you go, the more and harder it is to breathe, the harder it is to live the harder it is to think because the environment that you were created that you function the best is in close proximity to Jesus himself. Wow. Wow. You see, John 15, four through five, we know this, it says, abide in me and I in you. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me, listen to this, you can ask anything and it will be done for you. Now, some people take that scripture, Pastor, and they kind of blow it out of proportion. They're like, well, man, shoot, I can ask anything. They don't take the first part about abiding in Jesus. Right. They just say, oh, well, anything I ask for, I can have it. Right. So, you know, I'm going to ask for five more cars right now, and I, I need two more bigger houses. And, and, all that. and you know what? I think God wants to bless us. I don't think there's anything wrong with God blessing you. I don't think that God loves to bless you. He's a father. He wants to give you. Wouldn't you want to give good gifts to your children? Absolutely. However... It is not what he's saying. He's saying the reason why he's going to answer every prayer you have is think about this. If you've been abiding in Jesus, if you've been meeting with him, guess what starts to happen to your desires? Right. They begin to come his desires. Guess what happens to your prayers? They begin to pray and want what he wants for you. So of course God's going to answer anything you ask is because you're asking what he wants for you. Right. But see, you can't just ask anything that you want. That's not what the scripture no, says. It says that. after you abide, your desires will change to be like Jesus. Right. So anything you ask, of course he's going to answer it because it's what he's wanted for you from the beginning. Praise God. Psalm 91.1. Oh, I love this. We know Psalm 91. Listen, the promises of Psalm 91. I, how many of y'all have already quoted that during the COVID-19 season? How many of y'all been quoting Psalm 91? 91? I have been, right. No pestilence will come near your dwelling. There's some awesome promises, right? That was a, I don't know if you know, but Psalm 91 was actually the eulogy at the funeral of Moses. It was Moses' last, he actually wrote his last letter to all of the Israelites and they read it at his funeral. And that is the promises of a powerful God. But every single promise is contingent on verse one. Wow. Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. There's that word abide. If you abide in me and I abide in you, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, all the promises that we want, the healing that we want, the protection from danger that we want, all these things are not actually given for visitors. Wow. They're given for dwellers. Those promises are made for people who constantly return 
people who constantly come back to the face of Jesus, people who are faithful to his presence, people who come and say, God, I know if I go a day without you, I already notice a difference in my attitude. God, I know right. I just get cranky, God. I'm not cool to be around. If I'm not, I don't know about you, but if I'm not in the presence of God, my wife tells me right away, she said, have you been praying? Because dear God, you're hard to deal with right now. Has anybody <laughs> else been like that? I mean, I'm telling you, there's, if you have not been in God's presence, I don't, even one day you already start noticing a difference. Right. Why? Because life is proximity. And when you are out of proximity, you decay. Wow. You are beginning to decay. And everybody that you love will feel your decay. It will come out in anger. It will come out in offense. It will come out in aggressiveness. You will manipulate people. You will hurt people. You will not be a safe person to be around any longer. Wow. Because you become sweet and gentle when you're in the presence of God. Wow. You become somebody who's approachable. You become somebody who everybody wants to be around. Why? Because they're not actually wanting to be around you anymore. You have so much of Jesus on you. They're noticing Jesus in you. And everybody wants to be around Jesus. Yeah, they do. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in this seat right now. Yeah, but, but let's just keep going, okay? Let me show you this amazing picture. The very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Make sure that you look this up when you get back home. It says that the Lord God formed man. We know this story. And it said that he looked at the dust. You see, that's what you and I came from, nothing, dirt. All right? But watch this. God looked at the nothing and he blew his something into the nothing. In other words... It created what then Jesus calls man, which was very good. On the first five days, he said everything created was just good. But when he created you and I, he said, you're very good. In other words, we were his favorite thing he created. Right. Now understand this, he blows into his nostrils. Now watch this. When Adam exhales, he doesn't exhale his own breath. He exhales borrowed breath from God. Wow. In other words, God wanted us to know to begin, we should be consumed with him. And we would start by exhaling him, not us, wow. because he wanted to get it straight from the beginning. You cannot survive without me. Wow. You know, that the this, this scripture Praise says in, in him, we move and we breathe yes, and live, we have our being. Oh, you know, and so have beautiful. our being, you know, that what a, what a powerful picture that we inhale him and what we Breathe. inhale we exhale. Yes. yes. Wow. So that means if we're not spending time with God, we're not even in the proximity to inhale Him, to exhale yeah. Him. And you notice it. Everybody notices. Wow. If you haven't been spending time with God this week, how'd you do? You haven't been spending God for the last month. How's your life been right. lately? You don't have to go far to see the evidence of not being close to God, just like you don't have to go wow. far with seeing the evidence of people who are close to God. And listen, we're not talking about being saved anymore. Right. We're assuming you've already taken that step. We're talking about people who are saved, people who know Jesus, who have received the title now, but now are on a pursuit of passion wow. for the reason why they got saved, not for a church first, not for a community first, not for getting a husband or a wife first, all great blessings. You got saved because of the pearl of great price. His name is Jesus. He wants a relationship with you. Pastor, I'll never forget the beginning of this year. There've been so many times, you know, God changes our lives over the years. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I was, I was just getting back from a time of prayer and I love to go around a lake that's close to my house and I walk the lake, it's 2.2 miles and I just walk in and just pray and pray. And I just remember I came back and God told me and he whispered in my spirit, he says, I don't want you to pray anymore. I said, what? I said, that's the devil? I started just thinking, my God, is the devil talking to me? I thought I was just praying. I shouldn't be hearing the devil right now. But it was a pause and then I heard, as long as you feel obligated to do it. I said, what? And Jesus said, if you feel obligated to pray, then don't pray. I don't want to be another obligation in your day. I'm a relationship and I just want to know you. I want a relationship. You see, you're not doing God favors by being obligated to meet with him. He loves you. He wants to actually be enjoyed by you, just like you want to be enjoyed by him. Wow, yes. And y'all, we can make prayer an obligation. We feel bad if we didn't pray. Oh man, I should have been in my word. And we start feeling guilty and shameful for something that's so beautiful, like prayer. 
but we miss a day or two or we miss a week and we're just like, oh gosh, like we're feeling horrible because our Christian status according to the rest of the church should be this. But Jesus never gave you those standards. His standard was return to me. If you'll draw near to me, James 4, 8, I'll draw near to you. If you'll just take a step toward me, I'll take a mile towards you. Jesus just wants you. What relationship do you have in your life? What friendship? Do you think your friend feels awesome if they know the only reason you're hanging with them is because you have to? Do you think they're enjoying the time that they're spending with you? If the whole time you're with them, you're like looking at the clock and just like, well, I got to be here. So, you know, they're like, just go home. It's okay. You don't have to be here. Like, you know, if you're not enjoying this, like, do you think Jesus just loves to come to churches and places where he's not even welcome, but he's tolerated? You know, a lot of our churches tolerate the Holy Spirit, but he don't want to be tolerated. He actually loves to come to places where he's enjoyed, where he's welcomed. And I love the Way World Outreach because you welcome the Holy Spirit here. You allow him to be who he is. And that's why on Friday night, Pastor, gonna be great. there's going to be no hindrances to him walking in. I mean, we don't even have a roof to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, Pastor. Interesting fact, Jesus throughout his entire ministry never ever preached in any places with roofs. Just an interesting fact. He always preached in places that didn't have a roof. Even the synagogues back then didn't have roofs. And the one place that he did preach with the roofs was, was a house. The roof was torn off. Woo! Because a man who was desperate had to be lowered in. I just thought that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, I just yeah, love yeah. it. See, you can't cap God. You can't put a roof on him. What he wants to do in your life is so beautiful. Second Chronicles 26, 5. This changed my life. My wife and I, we have a son now. He's 14 months old. His name is Maximilian West Tate. I call him the million man. It's going to make me millions. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but Second Chronicles 26, 5, my wife and I were trying to get a scripture for parenting. We're like, God, you're going to have to help us. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's our first child. I mean, I bet you everybody who had a first child is like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just praying, God, you help me, right? So we're there and we're just like, we're so excited. And she's like nine months pregnant. And we come across the scripture. Listen to what it says. It's talking about a king. And it says, in the days of Zechariah, he said, he went and he sought God and had understanding in the visions. And watch this. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Wow. As long as he sought the Lord, everything he did succeeded. You see, here's the thing in your life. You come up with new challenges, new ventures, new jobs, new relationships, all kinds of things in your life. And I just want to tell you something. If you want to guarantee success, guarantee you don't have to be the one who makes the success happen because that's God's job. What you do have to know is that you're seeking God the whole way. Because as long as you seek the Lord, he will give you success. David's a great example of this in the Bible. First and second Samuel, we know all the stories of Goliath, David and Goliath, but it says constantly through the scriptures, David inquired of the Lord. Then David inquired of the Lord. Then David inquired of the Lord. You know what's so interesting about that pastor? There were so many battles and wars that David fought in those chapters. But what's so beautiful about that he inquired of the Lord is I asked God, I said, Lord, why would he have to inquire of you again and again? Because he knows that you told him you're gonna win the victory over every battle. You see, if I knew that somebody told me, you're going to win the battle in all these places, just go take it, I wouldn't feel I had to ask anything again. God made it simple for me. Just take all, all the enemies that I have, right? But David wasn't like that because he understood something about God. Even though the outcome might be the same, which is victory, the strategy is different for every battle. Right. So he knew, you know what, maybe this time God's going to tell me, right? And he did. God changed the strategy almost every single battle. You right. see, but if we're not close to the Holy Spirit, we're going to think the way it worked two years ago will work again the way that it did right. today. You know, and when we don't spend time with the Lord, yep. what we do is we almost glorify the strategy. Yes. Instead of the one that gave us the strategy. And David knew this, that, knew that I, the strategy worked because God gave it to me. No matter, even if it didn't make sense. Right. It no. worked because God gave it to me. Yes. So he was dependent on hearing the voice of God in every single battle. Every single battle. And that's battle. why he won every single battle. That's right. And, and we, that's can, right. we do get to the point that if it worked last time, we worship the methods. 
And we might even write a book, this method number one, method number two, method number three. <laughs> and then we just, we're more interested in getting the results than we are hearing from God and glorifying Him. And this is what Dave would have to do after every battle. We won because he gave us a strategy. Right, and here's the thing, difference yeah. between us and God. Yeah. We're in love with the final result, Yes. but God is in love with the journey to get the result. Right, yeah. Why? Because in the journey, he gets you. Right. If he just gave you the result automatically, he wouldn't get you leaning on him in the process. And because he's a relationship God first, he desires you. So his favorite part is actually not the ending, the mountaintop. His favorite part is the process of you coming back to him every day because what he wanted most was you. The last, one thing I didn't mention, Pastor, when Jesus, when God created all of those things, if you'll notice a pattern going on, he creates and he said, let there be light, and there was light. Then he said, let there be the fish and the airs and the celestial. Every single thing that he did, there was a pattern. Everything that he created on the day, the reason why he created it on that day was because the next day, what was there was going to need what was created on the previous day, for instance. He said, let there be the plants and all the fields, but plants need sunshine. So what did he create the day before? He created the sun because he knew the next day what was going to be needed was the sunshine for what he was going to create. Now listen, wow. there was a timing. In other words, wow. everything that he created, the water first. Why? Because the next day he's going to put fish in it. But if he created the fish before the water, then it wouldn't make it. Now watch this. On the sixth day, he creates you and I. What happens on the seventh day? He rests, why? Because God didn't create man for anything else but himself. Wow. The enjoyment yeah. that he got, the reason why he created man on the sixth day was because God finally said, now I have something that I can enjoy so much. I just wanna sit back and I wanna enjoy you see, you were created wow. not first to fulfill a purpose and pray 50 million prayers. <laughs> you were created not first to pastor churches, even though that's amazing. You were created not first to even have families. You were created first to enjoy God and for God to enjoy you. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, an example of this. It says that the first time we see him in the book of John, John the Baptist is baptizing people, Pastor, and it says that Jesus approaches, and John looks at him and says, oh my gosh, there's the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And he walks in, he said, you got to baptize me. John says, I can't baptize you. He said, you got to do this so we can fulfill all prophecy. Listen to what happens. He goes under the water. Watch this. He comes up, and it says that God the Father speaks from heaven. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And Jesus himself is there. It's one of the few times we see in scripture the entire Trinity in the same place. Now watch what God says. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Wait a second. Jesus hadn't healed anybody yet. Right. Jesus hadn't laid hands on any leprosy yet. Christian, Jesus hadn't walked on water yet. What happened for the 30 years before that? He was in secret enjoying his father. And you know what God said it, I, I'm proud of, what I love the most? Not that you're going to go, hey, I'm going to help you win all those souls. I'm going to help you get all those businesses. I'm going to help you have those things. But he says, I'm proud. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why? Because he's gotten the main thing, which the main thing is I just want to be enjoyed by him. I want right, him to enjoy good. me. I want us to enjoy him. For 30 years, Jesus was not in the light of anybody to see but his father. And in that moment, what Jesus had done for 30 years was announced publicly for everyone to know. You see, if you will make history with God in private, he will make history through you for the world. Right. Don't miss what I just said. If you'll make history with God in private, he'll make history through you for the world. I got to keep going. But David constantly was led by the Lord. Romans 8, 14, we know this scripture. For those who are led by the Spirit right. of God are children of God. That literally means those who are continuously led become mature spirits of God, mature children of God. Right. That's what the wording actually is. In other words, how can you be led by the Spirit if you're not listening to the Spirit? How do you know what God is telling you to do tomorrow, next week? How do you know the direction your life is going next month if you're not returning to hear Him? You see, the only way we mature as Christians is being led by the Spirit. It's not by sitting in church for 40 years. Right. Listen, right. you can be in church for 30 years, but because you're not being led by the Spirit, you're still a baby in God's eyes. Wow. 
Being led by the Spirit is actually what matures you. You know why? Because being led takes surrender. You give up your own agenda. You say, oh, I thought the service was going to go this way, Pastor, but I guess the Holy Spirit has different plans. Right. I, right. Thought that my, I thought I was going to do this for college, but I guess God wanted different plans. I'm going to go do this now. I can't tell you, I mean, he'll change it if you're led by the Spirit. Galatians 5.25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with him. That word keep in step means keep in the rhythm of the steps of the Spirit. You see, there's a rhythm to people right. who are constantly in the presence of God. You can feel it. It's like a song that goes on with them. There's a rhythm to their life. There's steps. I think about Jesus in John 6, 21. It says that he came to the boat and all the disciples were there on the side of the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. And it said the moment he stepped into the boat, they were immediately translated to the other side. In other words, God had a different timeline because Jesus was on the rhythm of God's beats, not the world's. So when he touched the boat, God said, I don't want to waste the two hours it's going to take to cross the lake because I need him there now. So he translated him there now. You see, this is what happens with you. If you start communing with the Lord, he'll get you on his timeline, not man's. Wow. You can get the promotion in a week that other people will get in four years. You can get to a place where you get favor in a situation that other people it took five years to get that same favor. Why? Because you're on the timeline of God. Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in the water and it said the second it came out of the water, 55 miles away, Philip is translated because God wanted him to preach now. He didn't want him to have to walk the 55 miles. He said, I need you in the city now. You're on my timeline. My God. Wow. My God. Ruth you know, 2 verse God, 3, before, go ahead. Yeah, you know, what... It, there's a lot being said tonight about our relationship with God. And, yes. and I, I think we're, we're, we're trying to do things instead of spending time with God. I think yes. we're more interested in doing yes. than we are in our relationship. Come on. We, we've gone to the point that we actually find our identity in the doing, not in our relationship. And he's saying, if you spend time with me, dwell with me, not visit me, but spend time with me on a consistent basis, inquire me, spend time with me. This is what I'll do. I'll accelerate your life. Your life will now be on my timing. Just think about Jesus. He only did real ministry. I mean, by that is three years. What he, he, he started preaching three, just for three years. And in those three years, he was able to make yes. such an impact yes. to change the whole world. To even today, three years, he did more in three years than any man has ever done, obviously, in a lifetime. He did more in three years than the whole mankind combined has ever done. And, and, I, and I really believe prophetically God Ooh. is speaking to us right now. Yes. And he's saying the dreams that I have for you and the vision I have for you uh, that you will not be able to do it in the natural. You don't have enough time to do it. Your dreams are too big because they come from me. Unless you get supernatural wisdom, supernatural favor, supernatural acceleration, it's gonna, it, you don't have enough time. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough ability. You don't have enough power. You need me to get you there immediately. Yes. What God is ready to do is accelerate some things that you've been laboring. You know, the Bible says, come unto me all that are weary and heavy laden. You know, what he's saying is, you've been laboring. Yes. And he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is, is light. light. What he was saying, let me show you my ways. You've done it your way and it's wearing you out. You've done marriage your way. You've done ministry yeah, your way. That, you've done vision your say way. That, that and it's wearing you out. Yeah. And God is saying, why don't you do it my way? Why don't you spend time in a secret place with me and then I'll reward you openly you, and Jesus. they'll know it doesn't make sense. I've, I've spent hours, weeks, years to get here and you got there quick. This is powerful. Woo. And you know what happens, Pastor? Your life becomes <coughs> exciting. Yeah. Your life becomes exciting. If you are bored and you are a Christian, I have to say, I don't know what God you're serving because when you walk with Jesus, you get a rhythm to your life. Right. You, get, you have a purpose for every step you take. You wake up and you're like, 
Ooh, what's God going to do today? Oh my God, surprises happen. Let me tell you this, Ruth chapter two, verse three. This is an amazing story. We all know the story of Ruth and Boaz, but watch this. Ruth has just left. Her husband's died, everything's going on. She comes into a place, read the book of Ruth. It's my favorite book of the Bible. It's amazing, very short. She comes into a place and Boaz is her kinsman redeemer. He is the favor that Ruth needs. However, Ruth does not know that he's even there. So her mother said, Naomi said, you got to go out and you got to go and pick somewhere to work. You got to try to make a living, girl, because we're going to die if you don't try something. Just try to go get something. And it says, watch this, because she's walking by the Spirit. She's walking in faith. She's, she's just depending on God doing something. It says that she walks and she happens, listen to the wording, she happens to stumble into the field of Boaz. Y'all? You know what starts happening to your life? This is what happens, Pastor Marco. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow you're gonna hear people saying, you know what, man, I, I don't know, I just went to this restaurant, I was just eating out on the back, but I happened to bump into this person and this guy shook my hand and I didn't know he was the dude who was the guy who was ahead of the guy to give me the promotion I needed in my job. I didn't know it, but I just happened to meet with him. I can't tell you how many times I happened to be in the airport and happened to meet a pastor who now I preach for because the connection happened to be in that seat that I happened to sit in, even though there were hundreds of seats I could have sat in, but because my steps are being ordered and I'm in a rhythm with God, there's an excitement. You don't know who you're gonna run into. You don't know what's about to happen because you're on a different beat now. Wow. So your life becomes, you know what? It just happened to work out that way. We just happened to get that children's home. We just wow. happened to be able to build that other sanctuary. I happened to meet the guy. We happened to get favor on the code because that day that we had lunch, he happened to be in a good mood. Wow. <laughs> The same guy that was trying to deny all the things we were doing, he happens to be nice today. Why? Because you are in the steps of God. I'm telling you, you wow. can try things your own way, but you will hit rock bottom quickly because your strength is a paralyzing agent to God's power. Wow. Your as long as your strength agent. is still intact, God cannot put his hands on you. Wow. God has to deliver you literally from your own strength before he can even start moving in your life. Wow. That's wow. what 1 Corinthians 1, 24 and 25 says. It says, those who are called, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom. Watch this. The foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than man's greatest strength. God's weakness is stronger than man's greatest strength. Have you ever tried to stop something? Something you hated about yourself? Have you ever tried? Let's, any honest men and women in here? I really tried to stop it. I hated cussing, so I tried to stop, right? I was on drugs and I really tried to stop, or maybe I just hated that I got angry all the time. You tried to stop. How many times did you try? Did you lose count? Because your greatest strength is still God's weakest weakness. Matthew, Peter comes to Jesus, and this is a crazy story because he starts rebuking Jesus. Because Jesus says what? He says, man, I'm going to go to the cross. All this is going to happen. And Peter said, no, 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 no. You're not going to go to the cross. Begins rebuking Jesus. I'd just like to give you all a suggestion. Don't rebuke Jesus. Probably not a cool idea. But anyway, he's just there. He's starting to rebuke Jesus. And what did Jesus say? He doesn't say, get behind me, Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. Why? Watch this. For you are seeing things, Matthew 16, 22 to 23, you are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not God's. Watch this. God condemns and he curses human reasoning. We try to reason our way. How can we work this out, Pastor? Let's come up with the best idea. Let's come up with the best thing for connections. Come on, we gotta, we gotta brainstorm. We gotta have the popular ID for social media. Let's come up with the best idea for our graphics. Let's come up, listen. God wants to give you all the greatest ideas, but human reasoning, he condemns in the scripture because if you're leaning on your own reasoning, you're not leaning on him. Right. God wants to come in and mess up our meetings. You know, you know while, we're, while we're talking about this, uh, there's so much more, and this is what I wanna do. We're gonna have to pick this up Sunday morning again because we really need to tap into this our time with God, because we haven't even talked about really <laughs> how do you develop that intimacy with yep. God practically. And, 
And we're seeing the necessity of it. Yep. You know, that God will accelerate our plans, we'll be on His time and His rhythm. He'll work things out. You know, the Bible says, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Hallelujah. You know, it just says, it doesn't say the steps of man, the steps of a righteous man. This is, this is a man that, that seeks after the Lord and, and, and he's been made righteous. He has a relationship with God. Every step is ordered. We really can't afford to be in a life that we're off track, that no. we're not on the order steps of God. There's another scripture that says that all things work together for good for those who love God. That's relationship word and, and are called according to his purpose. Right. So it's in that relationship that everything works out for That's good. It. It's not for apart, everybody. Apart from the love of God and the right. relationship with God, it just doesn't, doesn't work. So this is, this is, I know we're just tapping the surface of this. I can close with this. Yeah. And, um, I really, I really believe we need to hear part two of this. How many are ready to hear part two of this? So this is what we're going to do. Friday is not going to be part two. That's going to be a whole nother thing. Friday is going to be a whole nother message on Friday. And we're going to see people deliver and set free and heal that day. So you come with your anxiety, your stress, whatever it is, you come to get set free. You might, matter of fact, show up and not even know you needed freedom. You're going to get it. It's going to be awesome. That's going to be Friday. I know he has like even an illustrated sermon. It's going to be super powerful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Sunday, I want to pick up on this again. Amen. Because we really got, I mean, we're just barely tapping into this about that closeness with Jesus. But let's go ahead and close this out. I'm going to close with just this thought. Exodus 3, verse 2 through 4. We know the story. Moses is working in the fields. He's been hiding for 40 years. Hiding from God. Hiding from everything because he messed up. Some of us have been there before. You're so ashamed you can't even meet with God. Hmm. He's out there for 40 years, Pastor, and he's out there just tending sheep, just trying to do something. But he's hurting on the inside. He hasn't heard God's voice in 40 years. He walks onto a mountain and he says that there is a burning bush that is not being consumed even though it's lit on fire. This song is so perfect for this right now. And when you sang that in worship, I was like, man, this is it because of this point. It says that he walked and it said he saw the bush, but God hadn't spoke yet. Watch what happens. It says when he turned and focused, and the Bible said he literally said to himself, inside of himself, he spoke to himself, I'm going to go and see this great sight. It said, then God spoke. Why? Because every day there is a burning bush in our life. A moment when the invitation begins to prickle our hearts. Maybe it's when you're watching the football game. Maybe it's when you're driving in your car. But there is this gentle, if you want to focus, you can meet with me. Wow. But God will not speak until we turn our hearts wow. away from the distractions we are focused on and we focus and say, now I will look into your face and hear what you have to say. What did Moses get that day? He got his calling. He got a calling to deliver a people. Wow. He got a calling. Do you know what he would have risked if he had not turned and look that day. You don't know what you're missing when each day you miss the call, the, the, the call, the burning bush, and you say, oh, I ain't got time for that today. We've all done it. I know we're all guilty of this, but I just wanna let you know, you don't know what might've been in that turn. Maybe it's the healing you've been praying for for the last 10 years, and it could happen right there by yourself on your knees. Maybe it's a word that you're getting for somebody you need. Maybe it's a prayer direction for a per person in the church or a sickness that needs to be healed. You don't know. Maybe it's the breakthrough of your anxiety that you can't sleep at night, but if you would turn, it's hidden in the bush. It's hidden in the turn. And I'm challenging every person in here, do not miss the turn. There is a bush every day that is waiting for you and I with an encounter with a mighty God. But he waits for you to focus and to turn. And we want to pray for you tonight. Pastor, I don't know if you want to pray, but I just want to leave that with you. And I'm excited, but I just want your hearts to be tender. We're not going to be perfect, but let's make sure if you know you got to turn aside because you never know what's behind the turn. 
you know, so we're, we're going to be talking a lot more about that turn and what happens in that turn. I, I'm, I'm interested uh, what he does in his private time yeah. with God yeah. on a daily basis, on a regular basis. How does that look like? And I think we want to know how that looks like because we want to get the results. And, and he said, what are the results? Well, right now there's an, there's a, there's an enthusiasm coming from him. There's a fire that's coming from him. A lot of wisdom and insight on scripture. Amen. And there's going to be power flowing through him. You say, well, where does he get all that from? Well, the same place we could get it from. There is no difference. And the more time we spend with God, the more revelation that we get, we get of who God is. See, I can't be talked out of God. Like someone's not going to be arguing me, <laughs> arguing with me Come out on. of God. Come on. Because I've already experienced him. I don't know him with just my head. I have a relationship with God. No one in the world is going to get me to doubt God. But when you don't have that relationship, all you have is head knowledge. But you don't know him with your yes. heart. Yes. You know, or the Bible says that they that their hearts are, they, you know, they worship with their mouth, but their hearts, hearts are far from are me. Far from me. Yeah. And really God wants your hearts, our hearts, really close to him. So we're gonna find that out. Uh, but before we end, I want Gavin to pray with us. And he's, we're gonna pray for two things. One, salvation. And number two, we're gonna pray for supernatural healing in your life Tonight. today. Tonight's yes. your night of healing. Yes. God's gonna heal you through the airwaves, yep. so powerful. I heard that. The I centurion, that. the centurion was what he said when his servant was sick. Uh, he goes, "You don't have to go. Just you don't even speak have to it. come." You know, and, and you know why that was so powerful? Because it really affects us today. Because right now we have airwaves, and God already knew I'm going to set this up so I don't have to be physically in a room to heal anybody. You could get healed by faith alone and this is so powerful so lead us in prayer first let's lead someone to the lord and then we'll pray or either way amen healing yeah i uh, specifically when you started talking god told me when i came he said he said i'm going to heal people through the screens uh and that's going to happen tonight i want to pray for that and then we're going to pray for salvation it won't take long to do this but i do want you to do something with me when faith touches faith a miracle is born it's not when faith is spoken and there's no reaction you have to actually participate in your healing how are you going to do that? You're going to reach out your hands to the screen. It's nothing spooky. There's nothing crazy about it. It's just your screen. However, it's a point of contact saying, you know what? I'm going to agree with Pastor Marco and with Gavin tonight and with everybody else who's in this building, what you guys praying as well for people who are out there, maybe you're in here, who have sickness in your body. The cross has paid for your healing. It's not a question. It's not something God needs to think about. It's something that Jesus paid for. Nobody should ever tell you sickness is from God. Remember, God will never put anything on you that his son paid the price to break off you. Right, that's good. So just remember, healing is not a maybe for God. It is now. Put your hands out. I just saw somebody right now, just as, as Pastor Marco was speaking, who has arthritis in their right hand. I want you to put arthritis, that hand, right out toward the screen. You've literally been trying to bring it. You're really worried. Your knuckles are starting to swell up. Uh, I see people with a lot of swelling going on. Some of y'all are having some issues sleeping, who are watching tonight. Uh, your feet are swollen. Some of you have some, uh, it's like gout or something's on the bottom of your feet. I see all kinds of issues going on right now. A lot of you, migraine headaches, all that kind of thing. One of you guys are about to go into a surgery in a few days. I don't know who you are. Maybe, you know, call in or something or send a text into the YouTube channel, whatever it is, because we want to know that God's doing something here. But reach out your hands. And all we're going to do, the Bible says in Psalm 100, verse 3, he sent the word and he, he healed, healed them. them. You see, I don't have to touch you. We can send the word. And right now, this is a point of yes, contact. Lord. Faith touches faith in the name of Jesus. I pray over your yes. body. Maybe you're sick right in here. There's somebody who has a problem with their right knee who's in this building. Just put your hand on that knee right now and begin just to start moving it right in your seat. I want you to participate in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We believe you are completely healed, healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ and by the yes. power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Receive your healing from your head to your toes. 
right now. Now yes, here's Lord. your part. You gotta start moving that body part in your house. You gotta start, yes, you know, try to move that shoulder around. If your yes. stomach, begin breathing in and out real deep. If you have breathing problems, yes. just begin breathing in and out. If you have leg problems, stand up on your feet. Just begin yes, walking around Lord. your house. This is faith time. Yes, this is participation Lord. time. God is not just gonna, you gotta get involved. You gotta get involved. Yes, in the Lord, name of the Jesus, name we of believe Jesus. by the power of the Holy Ghost, you're being overwhelmed by him right now. You're being touched by him right yes. now in this building. I feel the healing yes, presence Lord. of God. It's tangible right here. And in Jesus name, if you need a healing, this is your time to engage with the presence and the power of God. Jesus paid yes. for it so you can have it. Lastly, we wanna pray. Yes, we wanna pray, man, that's powerful. There's yes. gonna be a lot more healing on Friday. Yes. Yes. There's gonna be a lot of healing on Friday too. If you do not know this Jesus, he is the pearl of great price. He is the thing that was lost that is worth the search of your life. You have been searching all your life, you just didn't know it yet. If you don't know Jesus, this is what you've been searching for. Tonight is your night. He wants to know you personally. And he wants to become your father, your friend, your provider. He wants to give you all the things your heart's desired. But it takes a cost on your part. It takes a life. Jesus does not just save you because you're about to pray a prayer with Pastor Marco and I. He actually says, you got to give your life to me. You got to allow him to become the boss of your life. You give away your rights and he takes them on. To be a disciple of Jesus is what he requires, nothing less. You must say I'm wholeheartedly, all the choices of my life, I'm giving them to you. You run my life now, God. I'm not my own boss anymore. If you're ready to say that, then just say this prayer with us. If we could all say it out loud together. And if you're out there, I want you to just take this moment. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus we, receive you as Savior. we receive you as Savior. I receive you as the boss of my life. I receive you as the boss of my Become, life. My, father. Become my father. Heal me of all of my iniquities. Heal me of all my iniquities. Cleanse yes. me of my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. By your blood, wash them away. By your blood, wash them I away. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in and you. And I wholeheartedly give you my life. I wholeheartedly give you my life. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to change. Lead me. Lead me. As a disciple. As a disciple. Of you. Of you. In Jesus' name. Thank you so Amen. much. God is good. Let's Amen. give him a hand real quick. We love you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. If you just said that prayer and, and you meant it with all your heart, we have a, we have a website, igotsaved.com, and igotsaved.com, and it'll help you with your next step. I want to just thank you for tuning in today. Friday is going to be powerful. Sunday is going to be powerful. I believe God is really speaking to us and preparing us for the greatest harvest we've ever seen, the greatest part of our lives. It's right there ahead of us. But before that happens, there's some preparation. And Jesus, this is what he did. He really spent 30 years spending time with the Father for three years of powerful ministry. This is what we're doing. Friday nights, Wednesday nights, we're hearing from God. You know, it was uh, Rob Sanchez came by the other day and he said this, we need to learn how to hear the voice of God. And look at this. I didn't talk to Gavin and tell him, hey, what's the next, this is what you're supposed to speak on. We're on a series on hearing the voice of God. You know what God is saying? I'm on a series that you're hearing the voice of God. And we're going to hear the voice of God, have a greater relationship we ever had with God, and watch the best part of your life. It's, right, it's starting right now. You're moving towards it. It's really time to get excited. Friday, all of us show up. It's not the same. Matter of fact, we're not even broadcasting it. You have to be here, kind of. So we have, we have In-N-Out Burgers here. We're going to have the Snow Cone Man, tacos, all kinds of But most of all, the presence of God's going to be here. Get ready for your breakthrough. Love you. Have a great, great evening. If anyone who wants prayer in that home, go ahead and pray with them. We love you. God bless you. See you this Friday. Hello everyone, what a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just wanna say, we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all, see you next time.